my fellow gnomes, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be implementing keybinds in our game. Now I've got this sort of suburban town setting, it's one of the templates and if we want to walk around it takes ages to walk around so I want to add a shift to sprint ability. How can we do that? Well let's get scripting. So I'm going to hit stop and I'm going to go over to starter character scripts and we're going to add in a local script. So this folder ensures that anything added in it, like scripts, will get added in whenever the character loads. Now, in order to detect input from the player, we need to use something called the user input service. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And then we're going to have a variable to check the current state is running. Initially, that's going to be set to false. And I want to react to whenever they press a key. So use the input service and there's an event input began and that connects into a function which we can see gives us two parameters we have the input and we have processed and i'll show you how these work so i'm just going to print out both of those print out input and processed and if we click play we should now see down in our output when i am clicking things we say input object and false if we want to see what key I've actually pressed, we need to say input dot key code. And then that will tell us if we press the, the W or the SD key, etc. Here we go. We can now see I've got W's and A's and I can hit space. Now that process, that false, that's actually whether it's been processed by sort of the default UI. So if I open up my chat window and I start typing in here, we can notice it registers all of the keys, but now they are true. Whereas if I've got the main game window selected and I'm pressing my keys, they are false. So this is pretty handy if you want to have a command like sprinting, but you don't want it to take effect when you're trying to type uppercase letters, for example. So with that in mind, we want to probably reject if anything is being processed by the rest of the game. If processed, then we can just go ahead and return and end. Now, sometimes you can do an if statement in a block like this, but when we're just exiting out of the function, we can do it all on one line. That's called a guard statement, by the way. Now, the next thing we want to do is check for the humanoid. So we'll create a variable for our humanoid and we can just check because we're in starter character scripts, the parent of this local script should be the character. So script.parent, and we're gonna look and see if there is a humanoid, if we've loaded in yet. If for some reason we haven't got a humanoid, then we'll just say, if not humanoid, then return end. So another guard clause there, just to exit out of it. And finally, we want to check what key they have pressed. So if input.keycode equals equals and we use an enum an enum is basically just this big library of stuff of preset values so we're going to compare it with the preset value for the key code of left shift and if they have pressed the left shift then we're going to say humanoid dot walk speed equals uh 50 and then if we click Play. hopefully what we should see is we're moving about and as soon as I press the left shift zoom we are sprinting now if you have your um, shift lock set on then it won't actually register at all so now you see if I press shift I'm not actually seeing anything down in the output so make sure you have your shift lock set off or you're gonna need to use a different key worth bearing in mind but we don't just want to turn the shift on, we want to turn the sprinting on and off. So what we'll do is we'll say 50, we use this is running variable. So is running and 50 or the default of 16. And then right below it, we can set the is running value to the opposite of what it currently is. So we'll say not is running. And so now if we click play, we can be walking a long, we hit shift, and then we are zoom off we go we're sprinting and we hit it again walking sprinting and walking sprinting and walking and so on 
In fact, we probably want to set this variable uh, before we do the walk speed because you might have noticed it, uh, it didn't react to my first run. So if we do it like that way around, that will actually be a bit better. There we go. So we spent the very first press. Now, this is great. We can toggle it on and off. And if that's what you want, then perfect. But what you might want to have is a sort of press and hold system, right? So you're only sprinting while you're pressing the key. Now, to do this, we'll need to make use of a loop. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab a run service. Local run service equals game get service run service. And this has a very interesting event called heartbeat, which fires every frame. And we'll connect that to a function. One of the parameters of this is delta time. We're not actually going to use this today, but just so you can see what it does. If we start printing out delta time, you can see how often this function runs. We're going to see a load of numbers in the output. Here we go. <laughs> Loads of numbers spamming the output. And that is actually delta time is the difference in time between each frame. So you can see there's normally about 0 0.016 difference between every frame, about 60 FPS. But now we're using this, we're going to set the walk speed within the, the loop. So we're going to move this line down into here. Of course, we're going to need the humanoid now so we can take these two lines, pop them down there as well. And then instead of having the input began when they first press the key as turning it on and off, we're just going to make input began, set it to true. We'll delete some of these lines. And then we're going to have copy this, paste it down below. But instead of input began, we're going to use the input ended event when they stop pressing that key. And then we'll set is running equals to false. And so now if we're running, it's going to be 50. Otherwise, it's 16. So let's give that a try. We're walking along, we press the shift and we do a tiny little sprint. But if we press and hold it, we're going to keep sprinting. And as soon as we let go of that key, then we're back to walking again. And if I'm say I'm doing some typing and I use my shift in the, in the text window there, it's not going to cause me to sprint or slow down. If I, I open up the, the window while I'm moving, there we go. No difference at all spam there but there we go that is a shift to sprint keybind pressing and holding using both user input service and run service if you'd like to see any more of these tutorials on a subject you have in mind then let me know down in the comments and maybe it'll make it into a future video but until then thank you very much for watching and goodbye